All right, let's set up the Canon ADD for shooting video. And if I don't cover a setting, it's because it's either not for video or it's an option that I don't use, but we're going to cover just about every setting in the camera. Starting off really simple, but important to mention, toggle the switch to video mode and then set your dial to manual. Also make sure that the lock switch isn't engaged because by default, this disables the wheel on the back which won't allow you to change the aperture. So make sure that that's off. Also, this video was shot and edited to be really fast so that we can get through all of it, pause, set up your camera, and then continue. All right, let's take a look at the menus, beginning with the shoot menu. First up is image quality. This actually is no longer a video setting. It never really was a video setting. It's about shooting images. On the 60D, you could shoot an image while in video mode. On the ADD, I haven't found it. You can't shoot an image in video mode. This is too bad because it's great for testing out the highlight alert. You can do that with video as well, but don't worry about this because you can't shoot an image and raw images have nothing to do with video, so skip it. We can go all the way down to lens aberration correction. Now I have this on on this ADD because I have a Canon lens attached, the 28 millimeter 2.8 image stabilized lens very cool lens, and it recognizes that lens and compensates for peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration. If your lens isn't recognized, don't worry about it. Next, you have the ISO speed settings. When you click into that, the ISO speed will show what you're currently on. You'll need to change your ISO based on the lighting that you're shooting in, but down to the range for movie setting, I pretty much just set that up to the minimum and the maximum that the camera allows so that I have them all available, even if I don't plan to use them all. All right, next we have auto lighting optimizer. That is off by default when you are in manual mode, which we're in because we want full control over all of these settings. That's why we're using manual. And leaving it off is a good option because I don't really want any auto setting that affects exposure to be on while I'm filming. Auto white balance has been updated a little bit on the Canon 80D. And in general, I wouldn't use auto, but sometimes it can be nice to see what the camera is saying is a good white balance. And then you can go over to the manual K values and dial that in, or you can use your own custom profile or even one of the presets. But the camera does a decent job in most lighting situations. So if anything, I like to use it as a reference point, but I don't leave it there because it will shift over time. And inside auto white balance, we have two different settings. There's the first one, which is ambience priority, and that retains the warm ambient color under tungsten light. And we have the addition of auto white balance white priority. And this means that the whites will be reproduced even under tungsten light, which you can see the difference here. But in general, I am gonna go to the Kelvins. I'm gonna dial in my exact color temperature and leave it there. Obviously, if I change my shooting environment, I need to re white balance the camera. In fact, right now I'm using a custom white balance, which takes its white balance off an image that you shoot in your environment. And also related to white balance, a lot of white balance options on the ADD, every white balance setting has a white balance shift option. So if you have a really difficult lighting situation, maybe under fluorescent lights, in that case you'd shift away from green towards magenta or whatever color problems you're having, you can shift that in the ADD. All right, and the first option in the shoot menu Number three is picture style, and this can be a big one. I generally use my own setting, which I've just labeled for myself called Raiseway, but it's just a version of a standard profile that I dial down all the settings. Check the description, not only for all the gear that I'm using, but check the description for, I'll put the little recipe in there for how I set up my own custom picture profile. But you have a lot of different picture profiles available to you on the ADD, and you can adjust all the individual parameters inside those picture styles. So that's a great option. High ISO speed in R, that's noise reduction. I left that in standard. I've been shooting on this camera for the last 30 days. I haven't seen any negative side to using it, so I'm going to use high ISO speed noise reduction in case I'm shooting in high ISO. Maybe the camera can help out a little bit with making it cleaner. And highlight tone priority, I'm leaving off. Next up, movie servo autofocus. I'm gonna enable that so that I can easily switch on and off the continuous autofocus, and I'll do that right on the touch screen. And that's something you'd wanna have on. Say I'm sitting in front of the camera and I'm gonna be moving around. 
then I want the continuous autofocus, which the ADD does really well, I want it to track me, especially at a shallow depth of field. You have multiple options for autofocus. In the Flexi Zone AF, which is basically a single point, you get the most amount of options. And in this mode, you can do something really cool, which is you can control the speed and sensitivity of that continuous autofocus. When it changes between something that's out of focus and in focus, doing a focus pull, you can control the speed on that. In face tracking, you can't control the speed of it, but if you're in front of the camera, again, like I'm doing here, you're gonna wanna have it on face tracking so it follows you. So just pick the AF method that works for you. There's a ton of different options and autofocus for this camera, which is really great because it does it well. So just pick the one that's gonna work for you, whatever you're shooting. And it's gonna take a little time to work with the different autofocus modes so that you can see what is gonna work best for you. And the sensitivity option should allow you to really dial in the autofocus. When it's the most sensitive, I hear the lens shifting, making little tiny minute adjustments, even when there's no movement in the scene. So somewhere in there is gonna be the right sensitivity for you. Most of the time I shot at the highest sensitivity, which again, just depends on what you're shooting. When it's something static, almost static, like me in front of the camera, I'm gonna dial down that sensitivity because I'm not gonna be moving around that much. I just wanna make sure it does maintain focus if I move. Movie recording quality. Lots of options here as well, but it can get a little tricky. We have both MP4 formats and MOV available to us. You don't get all of the options available in either of the formats. In general, I'm gonna to wanna to shoot MOV, which is gonna be the highest quality, and you get that all eye setting which is going to be the least amount of compression and the most amount of dynamic range if you're going to bring your image, your video into post-production and you want to grade it, you want that larger dynamic range, MOV is great. However, in MOV, you only get 24 frames and 30 frames a second. This is unfortunate. You don't get the 1080p 60 that this camera can now do. So if you need that, you do have to go to MP4. The good news is I don't see a lot of sacrifice in my image when I switch to MP4. So if I'm gonna shoot sports or slow motion, having that 1080, 60 frames a second, even in MP4, it still looks really good to me. So shoot in MOV unless you need the 1080p, then go to MP4. And in most cases, I'm gonna shoot at 24 frames a second. It's 2398 on here. In the camera menu, it's the option for FHD, 23.98 frames a second. And then because I'm shooting 24 frames a second, I'm gonna set my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, I'm gonna leave that there. And then what you're left with for exposure is your ISO and your aperture. So set your aperture based on the depth of field that you want, but it may also depend on the light that you're in. If you need more light, if you're in a dark scene, you're gonna to wanna to open up that aperture in most cases, and you'll have to adjust the ISO depending on how much light you have. So it's a play between the ISO and the aperture to get the proper exposure for the scene that you're in. And when you're in MP4, there's standard IPB and then there's a light version, which I'm generally never gonna shoot the light version. Maybe because MP4 is more web friendly, you can take it to your phone really fast, get it online. Maybe if you were shooting just to put it on social media, then that might be a chance to use that light MP4 IPB compression. In the MOV setting, they're both full HD. The digital zoom I'm going to have disabled but you can easily switch into this on the touch screen. And I've used it at three times, which you can see here, and maybe even to six times with good results. So that's a handy option to have. You can also set it up in one of these custom profiles on the dial. You can set up the camera any way you want. If you have the need to quickly go between different setups on your ADD, having the two custom options on the dial to quickly switch into is a nice option. And then of course, setting up the audio, the sound recording option, I'm gonna work most of the time in manual as I'm gonna record my audio either off camera the way I'm doing it now into a recorder or I'm going to be recording my wireless mic into the camera allowing me to dial down the preamp and leave it there. We don't want the camera to adjust that. So auto will give you noise because it'll adjust when you're not talking, looking for a signal and it'll raise the noise floor. If you are in a fast moving environment again or you're outside and people are being in front of the camera and away from the camera and their audio is constantly changing and you don't know what kind of audio you're going to get, then an auto option might work for you in that setup. It's about the only time I'm gonna use auto. And with a good microphone, 
you won't have to run the preamp too hot. On the ADD, I'm finding that setting it at about 25%. The first quarter mark on the record level setting, I can still get clean audio from the camera in manual mode. The grid display is something that you can have on your LCD screen if you want help with composition or leveling. There's also a digital level, but in general, I leave that off. The button function, if you go into that, there is actually a nice option to be able to use the shutter release to start and stop the video because I have noticed that I've missed or not been able to trigger the record exactly when I want to with the start and stop button that is the default one. It's a little spongy and it can be hard to get it to start and stop. So if you want, you can make the shutter button your start and stop as well as the button on the back. Down to time-lapse movie mode, that's disabled by default, but it's really nice that you can jump into that and shoot a time-lapse without extra gear if you want. And you could again put that on a custom function if you wanted to get one really quick. We go over to the play menu. There's not much in here, but on the third screen, the first one highlight alert, I definitely enable that. That's really nice even though you don't get to see it except when you're in the review of your playback on your camera, but it will help you see what is overexposed in your image. If you take a test video and then play it back, it'll blink. So I definitely have that enabled. The AF point display, I like to enable on my 60D because I could take that snapshot and it shows me where it was focusing. Again, since they don't have that in the ADD that I can find, it's not as helpful, but you can enable it if you want. The histogram display, I set that to RGB because I prefer it, but you can go with brightness or RGB depending on how you like to view the histogram. And control over HDMI, I'm gonna leave disabled unless I'm actually hooking up a monitor and I need that control. Going over to the setup menu, the format card option is there. Use that if you keep seeing your camera auto stopping. Obviously save all your footage first, then you can reformat your card in the camera. And that can help with the problem where the camera is stopping before it should be, which on the ADD is about 30 minutes. You should get that. So if you're having that problem, try formatting the card. The Wi-Fi I'm gonna leave off because I don't wanna burn up my battery. Turn it on if I'm gonna transfer something to my phone. I have the LCD brightness set to the middle. It's nice that you can turn it all the way up and see it in the sun, but you'll wanna be careful about judging your exposure with the LCD depending on the brightness of your screen. That's when using histograms is really important because you can see if the image is actually blown out or not. In the viewfinder display, you can choose to display the electronic level, which is only gonna show in the two AF modes for single point and multi, not in face tracking, so you can turn it on or off. And video system, you have NTSC and PAL on this camera. So if you're in the US, just use NTSC. If you're in Europe or another country that has PAL, use PAL. It'll just be easier. The feature guide I leave enabled gives you a few brief words about what all the controls actually do. So that can be really helpful when you're learning the camera. Touch control I leave to standard. You can change it for your preference. Sensor cleaning I'm going to leave to auto. The info button display options, I'm going to have them all checked so that I can have all of the information displayed as I toggle through it. That's going to be the same for the live view info switch setting. And again, I'm going to have the histogram displayed to RGB. This is actually where it displays when you're seeing it before you hit record. And the other one is what you see when you look at your videos in playback. And something that I found that's really cool, when you go to the review screen, the playback screen, click through the info button, it actually tells you all of the settings that you had when you recorded the video. Sometimes when I do these, I would love to have known what the settings were. I didn't forget or I didn't mention them. It's all there for you to see. So check that out for sure. And in the custom functions one menu under exposure, you will find in the second menu inside that menu, the different ISO speed increments. If you're not seeing all of the ISO options, go into here. It should be set to one third stop, not one stop but that should be on by default. But just in case you're not finding them, set it to one third stop and you'll have all of the ISO options. All right, that's all the menu settings inside the camera. You also have the quick function button, which is gonna give you a lot of access to settings on the touch screen, which is really handy. And when I'm shooting, that's what I'm gonna use, such as turning on the AF servo and white balance and manual audio settings, which you can now adjust while you're recording. You can do that right there on the touch screen. So I absolutely love having access to that on the touch screen. It makes the ADD, a DSLR, more like a traditional ENG camera where you have all of those controls as buttons. The touch screen really 
almost replaces all of that. It's super simple. You don't have to dive into the actual menus that we just went through. All right, that's all the settings. You're ready to shoot really high quality video with your Canon 80D. You do need to know that you're in manual mode, so you can't just set up these settings and the camera's gonna do it all for you. The 80D does have good auto modes, so you could switch into something like TV, which is shutter priority, set your shutter at 1 50th of a second, and let the camera do everything else. And if you were in a vlogging setup, it would work really well. Or if you're just struggling to learn your camera and all these manual settings are too much in the beginning, you will still get really nice video out of this camera in auto modes. Otherwise, you're in manual, you have full control, you're gonna get the best image when you know how to work with it. Really work on that exposure triangle, getting your exposure and your white balance and those things set up properly for whatever scene that you're in is the most important and lighting. You really wanna get that exposure that'll get your cleanest, best looking image. And then if you shoot it really well, you can do small tweaks in post-production and you'll have amazing looking video. All right, make sure to press subscribe for more videos just like these. You can follow me, Podcast Helper, on almost all platforms. Come ask me questions, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's all Podcast Helper. Find me there. Come say hi. And ask your questions in the comments about this setup or anything else you've seen on this channel. And I will see you next time. 2 a.m. in the morning.